It's six o'clock. <laughs> With that, to the left, right. appreciate all the to audience the today. To what? To the Administration. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the rest of you council members. <laughs> With that, Mr. Bridge will have a roll call. Uh, thank you. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Higgs. Here. We have seven present. With that, Chief Trustee will give us the invitation. Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and all thy many blessings and many favors and the beautiful weather. Please be in this meeting. Please let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders and our troops and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I need action on the meetings from April the 15th. So moved. Second. First was Councilman Lindsay. Yes, sir. Lindsay and uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, by, uh, Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Uh, it's not Vice Mayor Lindsay, it's Councilman Lindsay. I'm sorry, Councilman Lindsay. Lindsay. Yes. Thank you. Vice Mayor Pegasus. Yes. So that passes 7 to 0. All right, then I need a motion for the 429 special okay. meeting. Second. First by Chris Shammy, second by who? Me. Vice Mayor. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Stain was not present. And Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Passes 6 0 to 1. <laughs> With that, I have a proclamation to present to the Megan Adams and uh, her son. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me read this and then I'll give it to you. Whereas May 14, 2024, our child hopes appreciation of speech day during which awareness will be raised throughout the city of New Orleans about childhood happening of speech and an extremely challenging speech disorder that affects one in 1,000 children. Whereas a childhood expert on speech causes the children to have significant difficulty in learning to speak, and it is among the most severe speech deficits in children. Whereas the act of learning to speak comes separately to most children, those with require early appropriate and intensive speech therapy over many years to have to learn to speak. Whereas with other proxy speech therapy intervention, children and experts will have diminished communication skills but are also placed at a high risk for secondary impact in reading, writing, spelling, and other gross Therefore, I, Bill Cook, Mayor of the City of New Orleans, hereby proclaim May 14, 2024, as a virtue, Awareness Day to the citizens of New Orleans and the surrounds are encouraged to work with their communities to increase awareness and understanding. There you go.
Hey, Bill. I'm going to get a picture for them. I'll say everything that's going on. I guess we're done. Do you want to? Picture for them. Oh, okay. We're going to go over the seal. You want Up here in the middle. Seal? <laughs> okay. There you go. Your councilman, right there. Twenty years. <laughs> okay. okay, we have a Taco Bell site plan and conditional use approval from City Council. Uh, I also have Mr. Field. Chairman of the uh, planning board here with us. Steve, you got anything to say? Uh, you got the report, right? Yeah. You all got my report, right? They have the packet, yes. I have it? This I one? You can see it in the packet. The one I sent? I don't have, I don't have, I never got your, your recommendation. Yeah. You know, to me, sir. All we have is a staff report that says you guys approved it. Thank you. Oh, the one from February? They, I'm pretty sure they got this one, sir. I don't know. Well, your last meeting was like a month ago. Yeah, I know. 20 February. And then we had one for... Uh, the, uh, you had one on 3-5? Yeah, that was for um, those uh, ordinances we changed around. Yeah. I looked this thing over. Um, the staff report is really close to being where it ought to be. Under the timeline down there, it says the board approved conditional use with recommendations to allow for one entrance and exit. One Main Street, northbound only. Uh, and that was, a, a variance was also approved for a 30 square foot ground monument sign on East Lake Avenue. Also, we had requested that any trees that were planted along Main Street were to match what we already have, which I believe are silver lilacs. Is that correct, Mr. Bridge? It is, yes. Yeah, silver lilacs. That was the other recommendation that we made. And I looked at this site plan and I couldn't see where it mentioned the silver lilac in the list. So I don't know what they what they had there, but I can't. Anyway, that was a recommendation that we made to keep them all the same on Main Street. That's the only thing that I seen it didn't quite match up to what the actual board did. I'll take any questions the council might have for me. Council, I have any questions? I have a comment. Um, I just I wanted to say I was pleased to see that most of the trees are native Ohio trees. Mm -hmm. And if they did do that, that would be awesome and then we would have that well, that was that was one of the stipulations we put on their site plan was that they I didn't had to see that the same the ones yeah, either. that we had on Main Street already, so they're all the same. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fields, yes. have they gotten back to you with these recommendations that they're going to comply with these? <clears throat> as far as I know, they were uh, the site plan was approved by planning board and and uh, the planning director. The only change that was made after the fact of the meeting was they had to move the building down 12 feet. Okay. But everything else is identically the same, is my understanding. Okay. 
because I read, looking through their documents, they had some trees that I didn't even recognize the names of. So they're going to put the silver lilacs in like the rest of the city? Those are required. That was a requirement we put on the, on the site plan for Main Street. Okay. Because right. everything Thanks. on Main Street is silver lilac. Okay. The rest of the stuff in the back, they can plant wherever they want. Right. But on Main Street, it has to be the silver lilacs to match what's already there. All right. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Do we need a uh, motion to include this communique in the uh, original site plan? I'm sorry, for the question. I'm sorry. No, I didn't hear your question. This is his report. Do we need a motion to include this communique from yes. the planning board into the original packet? You guys already, I'm pretty sure you guys already got that back in February with the email to you, but you can do that as well for sure if you want to make it officially part of this packet. That's so good. It doesn't really have any impact on what you guys are doing, to right. be honest with you. Um, and we, my recommendation is to approve or deny the site plan as is instead of doing all the extra motions. So do you want a motion or not? I think you got, yes, the point of bringing it in front of the council is you guys have to make the additional approval above, above your planning board. So yeah. same thing we do with McDonald's, the same thing you guys are doing here now. So once the planning board approves a site plan or a conditional use, it has to be seconded and followed up by you guys for approval. So do you okay. want to not approve what planning board approved? It will take an affirmative vote of five, not four. So basically, if you want to change something that the planning board voted on already approved, you would take five votes instead <coughs> of four. Mr. Mayor, I move we go with the planning board's recommendations and approve the site plan. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, a second by Mr. Shannon. So, first by Lindsay, yes. second by Mr. Shannon. Yes. And this is for top of the site plan and conditional use approval? Yes. Thank you, sir. And so, we have a first on the floor by Councilman Lindsay, a second by Councilman Shannon. We'll go ahead. Any discussion for that, sir? Okay, we'll just call for the vote and we'll go down to Vice Mayor Akers. No. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheen? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Passes six to one. Do you want a uh, motion then to approve the uh, type plan? We just did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I, mean, I was thinking that was on the motion. To You're good. Yeah, it's all good to go. So uh, what that means is Taco Bell has been officially approved for the city. So it is uh, one of their last hurdles, which is council. So we'll send a letter uh, to council of Taco Bell and them know that it's been approved and they can start council. Mr. Mayor, for me. Go ahead. Uh, I, I have heard some comments that within the city that some people are not crazy about McDonald's and or Taco Bell coming in. And my answer to them is we have to start somewhere. And hopefully down the road, I don't know how many years or months or weeks it'll be, we can get a decent restaurant in here. Uh, I would love to see a Texas Roadhouse myself, but you know, I think we're a little small for that. Uh, you know, uh, I think we need more restaurants, at least one or two, that are sit down, eat in, waitress type things, instead of fast food. I'm not a big fan of fast food, but uh, I did vote for it because we got to start someplace. And with the developments and stuff that's coming in, I think it's a, a good start. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> with that, Mr. Bridge, I think you're up. It is, thank you. All right. Uh, 
Thank you, Mayor Cook, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share for you the short city manager report since it is the first of the month. So under, um, we have the planning and, uh, planning and zoning mayor's court attached. So council has any questions on that, be happy to entertain. If not, we'll move on under discussion topics. Uh, updated study for the Addison New Carlisle 235 split. So as we discussed earlier, and I'll be getting a hold of Mr. Peters and uh, Chad here uh, soon enough, uh, we have uh, put an addendum into the um, traffic study that we had done for the Addison New Carlisle split. I think it's going to be a win-win for everyone involved. Again, this has happened very late last week. So um, once that study is done, we will share it with everyone. Um, and then moving on, Habitat for Humanity, dedication number two. Thank you for everyone who showed up on behalf of the council. Um, I did show up, I did present the key, so again, it was a great turnout. It's a good a testament to our city and how welcome we are to all kinds of new development in our town. Charter review document that was emailed out to city council. Please review that. Um, we're gonna be hit the ground running soon with that. Um, and then we have to get some things on for the ballot. So I just wanted to get it out to everyone um, in an earlier fashion, just in case certain council members that are new wanted to kind of revisit what uh, the previous council had wanted to change. Um, boards and Commission Handbook, I will have that finished and amended uh, by the end of this week. So we will uh, we'll email that out back out to council when we're done. So minor changes on the actual uh, handbook itself, but I do need to go and add some dependencies and stuff back in and then get that complete document out to council. So I'll do that probably by the end of uh, this week. Uh, on 5 2024, that is um, our next regular council meeting we're going to be submitting some information to council regarding potential upcoming city pro programs such as movie night senior registry no knock registry and more um, now that we have some assistance and mrs lowry has been knocking it out of the park she's um, doing some of these programs that we've always wanted to do we just haven't had time to do them or the manpower to do them but we are beyond excited to share with the public and everyone what things we have in store for our citizens in our last staff meeting, we have dubbed this the Year of the People, and uh, we thoroughly enjoy that because what we have not been able to do is do programs and stuff and get back to our citizens because we've been in recovery mode for so, so long. And that recovery mode is getting very, very close to being over. So um, we can start giving back uh, to our citizens, and we're very excited about that. Upcoming legislation, chickens and city limits. The first, rule, the first read will be uh, May 20th. The second read and voting will be uh, June 3rd. Um, bonding of city, certain city employees, that will be coming up. I want to uh, bond out our zoning inspector and then quite frankly switch bonding companies from who we're with now, which is an insurance agency, and actually bond for our insurance, actual liability insurance. to streamline a little bit more. Um, so that will become the council as well. Monroe Meadows TIF legislation, I wish I had a timeline for that. We just don't have that yet, but we can expect that here soon because that first round of TIF legislation does take quite a few time to get to that second round. So we don't want that to go too much further. It is in our attorney hands out of Columbus who's working up some numbers and drafting that legislation. It can be pretty daunting and pretty, pretty, pretty long. Uh, tax budget, it, as soon as we hit tax budget, that's, that's our first sign of our operating budget for 2025. So the years go by very, very quickly. So we'll be introducing the uh, first read on June 17th. The second read is uh, in voting is July 1st. That tax budget has to be adopted by July 15th for state, state code. That tax budget just takes a look at how much we're going to get from our levies and stuff like that. Um, but we do take the opportunity to just kind of get an early, quick look into what our finances are looking out. We we'll always project six months out in advance when it comes to these budgets. So this is a good little early indication of what 25 is going to look like. But again, we don't really have a lot of work sections on the tax budget. I recommend not, just because it's really just a formality that the county makes us do. Not all counties in the state of Ohio actually require tax budget. Ours does, and the numbers will change. So um, I would just recommend that you guys see that tax budget. The numbers will change and we'll vote on that. If council would like to have a work session, we're more than welcome to do that, but it just seems to be kind of a, I don't wanna say waste of a government meeting because they're never truly a waste, but it's just redundancy because it's gonna change. And we'll be having that same meeting when we talk about the operating budget a few months later. Um, that's all I have uh, for uh, uh, my city manager report. And we're happy to entertain any questions. Go ahead, Bill. I'm old, so you need to explain some things. Not a problem. What is the seniors registry and the no knock registry registry? Yeah. So I, I have other visions of no knock stuff and so no knock is something registers. that Mayor Cook has been we talked about for a long time. This is not a direct 
uh, requested Mr. Cook. It's something that April had thought about doing too. Basically, we have a lot of solicitors in town. So oh. if you want to not be knocked on, you submit your name to this registry. And we're still working out the details and legality of all that, but a lot of city has it. Has it. Okay. It's just a way to hopefully prevent some solicitors from knocking on the door. Senior registry, still not fully developed yet. We're still working ins and outs, and I don't want to go too much detail to it. But basically, if you are aged X amount of up, you can call and get our registry. Um, and that way, if you need help doing something or emergency situations arise, we know how to help that person. We have a lot of senior citizens that don't have no, no family, no, they don't belong to a church, and they're just kind of left hand. As we uncover more of the code enforcement, property maintenance, we're seeing the need for that. So again, still working out the details, but it's something council will have to vote in because it will be a program. Mm -hmm. The, uh, <clears throat> if I may, sir. Go ahead. <clears throat> I shouldn't have talked to you because I forgot what I was going to ask. So I'll right, come back to me. But thank you for right now, sir. Thank you. Great, great questions. I don't know whether anybody saw it on Facebook, but I believe there was a gentleman mm -hmm. on there that had some discussion in regards to providing senior citizens with lawn mowing and possibly some other lawn uh, activated services mm -hmm. at a reduced rate or possibly donation type thing. I think the senior registry would play right along with that. I, I, we'll see how that plays out. Um, okay. I met with the gentleman this morning actually be, um, to work out some kinks regarding that particular post. Um, so as we uncover some more items and, and detail our program, I'll bring council up to date with that final administrative decision on how we're going to handle that particular post. Okay. Uh, we, had, we had a great meeting this morning though. He's a wonderful young man with a great head on his shoulders. But we did meet with him this morning. Anybody else got any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. This vehicle, I believe, off violates Okay. The cruisers in the park. Okay. <coughs> what's, what, what's it violating? The junk and operable and unlicensed vehicle ordinance. How is it junk and operable? Is it got a flat tire or something? It's a junk vehicle that's been sitting there for weeks. Maybe not a, you, have, you have to look at our definition of what is classified as a junk vehicle, and just a vehicle sitting there is not classified as a junk vehicle. But I'll look into it for sure. And if it is a violation of our code, which I'm pretty sure it's not, just we'll, we'll take care of it. But junk is like you cannot get it into it and drive it. We're very capable of getting in the car, turning on, and driving it away. I think we need to do that. Hmm? I think we need to do that. <clears throat> well, I'll make that decision and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's, it seems to be doing its job, and that is slowing people down coming into town. I, I, I have to concur. I think it's doing the job yeah. that it's meant to do. And we, we actually have moved it. It was sitting a certain way and I had to move a different direction. So yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So what I, I actually sat and watched people, I think our local people know it's no one in there, but we have a lot of traffic just drives north on 235 to get to point A to point B. And I've literally seen people put their brakes on coming up to Ensley Park. And that is essentially 1,000% of the reason why we end up doing it. But it's not in junk, and I can see where you're coming from that, sir. It's a very good observation. But according to our code, unless it's got a busted window or, or and I'll, re I'll revisit that just to make sure, but it, it should be compliant with all our codes. But I can attest that it has slowed, slowed yeah. people down coming into town considerably. That has been my thought also whenever I travel and it's only effective for so long, and then we got to find a new spot for it. You have to move it, leave it, and then put it back. Mm -hmm. But that's a very good point. We appreciate the feedback, but I'll look into it. I'll, I'll let you know. And if it is, I'll move it ASAP. Go ahead. Uh, on the uh, no knock registry, the I've, I've been getting probably in the last six weeks, I've had probably four different solicitors knocking on my door mm -hmm. and they always get upset yeah they do you know <laughs> i think they're trained to become upset i think it's just their natural defense <laughs> because i ask them if they have their permit to solicit in the city and they i get the standard answer 
well, my boss has this back at the office. I go, well, I said, that's nice that your boss has one, mm -hmm. but where's yours? And they go, well, I don't need one because the boss has it. I said, no, you need one, and you need to go to the city manager's office, or to the city building, and pick up your permit every day that you're in town soliciting. And they go, no, no, we don't have to do that because the manager has one. I says, and then I kind of get irritated with them. And I tell them, I said, you know, I says, uh, you can either do as I request, or I can call the sheriff's office and have you removed from the city. And they look at me and they go, well, you can't do that. And I said, I can do that. I'm a city councilman. I know what the ordinance says. You need to leave, or I'll call the, tell them the sheriff's office, because that has more impact than calling the city manager. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, definitely call the sheriff's office. I'm not going to forcefully remove anyone. <laughs> that's that's and, their job. And usually, and, and I watch them on my, on my cameras, and as soon as they get around the corner, they disappear. I don't know, I mean, it's like aliens to them, they're just gone, mm -hmm. you know. I've had them on their phone calling somebody, so they, somebody comes and picks them up, and they leave. And I don't know if they go to another section or not, but if, if you could suggest to the sheriff's office, to can I keep an eye on people wandering around the city knocking on doors? Our contact with deputies are very rare what's going on. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, yeah, each individual person is supposed to have their permit. So if there's yeah. five people in a group, all five of them are to have a permit. It's five bucks a day or something like that. Yeah. They're supposed to keep it on them at all times. So they say they don't have a permit. What I recommend doing is they yeah, call the sheriff's office too, but also write down the name of that company and they'll let me know because I actually will prove if a company is able to come into the city or not. So let's say if we have a history with like, I'm just throwing it, I'm like gonna name a real company, um, Timber Board Company came in here and they were really rude to our citizens, I can deny that for me next time coming in so they can't come in here. So we do keep a list, like MetroNet is very respectful, um, but then we have some that are not. So again, if you see that situation, please shoot me an email, let me know the name of the company, that way I can put them on my little list I have and you know, we, we don't say Okay, so, all right. Yep. Sounds good, thank you. Okay. Sure. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. Moving right along. I think we got a committee report on the uh, oh, it's our first one. council diocese, am I correct? It is. It's our first committee report. Very first one. For those of you who are not familiar with what we're speaking of, we set up a committee to look into the possibility of building a platform so that the council could possibly be a little bit above the ground and possibly help you folks see who we are. And we can see that. And I'll defer to John. Thank you. Yeah, we had uh, two meetings. You know, there's two other people on the committee too, which is Kathy and, and Peggy. And so we met twice at the coffee shop on April 22nd and April 29th. We've got a few recommendations, you know, and so let me go through the recommendations. And then we had, a, I guess, Kathy had a discussion with, Rand, with Randy in order to... Chad. Oh, Chad, yeah, Chad. sorry. Yeah, with Chad. Yeah, okay. No. So, anyway, so the, the dais, you know, Naturally, you know, it's going to have to fit seven council members and also the six admin people. Now, the admin people, now on the dais, we all agreed that there should that there should be a walkway between the council and that admin. Naturally, you have to walk in and get, you know, and get get your seat. Okay, the podium on the, this particular we were kind of discussion about we would like to see the podium kind of in the middle maybe we went a little bit beyond our scope but in the middle instead of way back here behind uh behind the the audience uh, and also you know to have a face a better face with it to where we don't have to scream to you and you don't have to scream back to us too so and it's going to be and each year, each council member will basically have a unit, we we'll call it a unit, so that also with that we were we need it to be mobile, so we'd be able to move it out of the way, because we you do rent this place, 
and it would be taking up space, the rental space, you know, if we kept it all right here. So in order to do that, naturally, we would asking for wheels to be put on so it'd be easy to move up against the wall and easy to move back. The circle, uh, I call it a semi-circle, but it's not really a semi-circle, but an archway so that the like what we have here, so Kathy can see Chris, you know, yeah, yeah we can see Bill and, <laughs> and Ben, so that we can see each, each other you know, while, while we talk. Um, we even went as far as, you know, what kind of wood would we like to see it, you know, what color wood, you know, and we were talking about uh, a medium wood tone, um, such as hickory and something in that, in that way, uh, because it's a peaceful look. It's a peaceful, if darker it is, you know, believe it or not, it does bring on the anxiety, you know. So, uh, also where we'd like to have it, you know, what we're recommending. Now, there was a lot of talk about this in the meeting that, you know, the one meeting um, where I was appointed, is should the mayor be higher than the rest of them? We don't think the mayor should be higher, but however, you also asked about doing this for the uh, mayor's court. In a magistrate type, you know, way, Probably somehow it should be, you know, we're not going to have the sides, so he, so the ma so the magistrate will look, you know, will look higher than than the people. The idea is not to show that that they're more powerful, you know, it is to really to so that the voice can can project and they can project all the way to the back. So that's the idea of that. Uh, the seal we kind of discuss the seal being up there that's okay but when we look at other places we notice that the seal is also smaller and it's on the it's in the middle you know usually right under where the mayor is or with the magistrate you know it's you know it's there so we could probably get a smaller seal um let's see Try to read off my notes here, so. Podium, okay. Then the podium uh, should also mat match. The, oh, the council name tags. To change the council name tags from being on top of the table, basically to be, have slides, you know, so that right here, you know, it'd be like this way, you know, you know on, the, on the table instead of sitting on top, you know. So anyway. Then we came down to a conclusion that, you know, the budget, you know, we kind of discussed, you know, how we, we were looking nationally, and we looked at one, one company, and they were talking about $29,000 very minimum. You know, we thought that was kind of steep, you know, for that. We would like to also, if possible, and this is where you come in, Randy, I think, is to have somebody local, you know, to build it. If somebody local, if we can keep that kind of money, you know, local. that's where Chad, that's where Chad Johnson came in. Yeah, I'm the one who set that up. What? I'm the one who introduced, brought Chad in. I know, right. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I because we didn't know anybody else, that's why we came. Yeah, no, I that's, misunderstood it, my bad, okay. Yeah, that's why, that's it. That's our recommendations. Great. You know, and so that's, you know, I think what council needs to do now you know, because we came to the conclusion that one, you know, we don't have the expertise we need to actually bring it all together. You know, so we need, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, how many people it is to bring, to bring the ideas all together and to know what, you know, how much further do we want to go. Uh, we talked about Chad Johnson. I never met Ch Chad Johnson. I don't know. I don't even know who he is, other than we called April and got his phone number. And he was unavailable that particular day to talk. So anyway, that's what we have. Any questions, answers? Go ahead. Uh, this comment really isn't for you, Mr. Kraybacher. It's more for the city manager. 
uh, but based on the three person panel's recommendations, the, uh, I think those recommendations possibly be given to Mr. Johnson and see what his cost would be to build that uh, for us if council, so it's like a three part thing, if council uh, likes what they recommended, from his description, uh, I think it'd be a very nice uh, setup, easy to move for uh, us and for the mayor's court and to move it out of the way for the, uh, when we rent this place. Uh, <coughs> Come on, sir. Oh, I'm not, I just call. Oh, okay. That's not right. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if, if council liked what he, his description, I would make a motion to uh, accept their recommendations and uh, try to get this ball ro rolling and have the <coughs> city manager see what the woodworker, what it will cost, and then bring it back to us to see what we're looking at. The, the motion would not be to go ahead and build it, have it put in, but to, to accept their recommendations and then see how much it's going to cost. And, and get back to us. We got a recommendation on the floor. I need a second. I'd like a little discussion before that. Well, okay. Before yeah. we go. <gasps> right. Yes. Please. Once I get the second, I'll yeah. okay. open this for discussion. Okay. Yes. So the I got a recommendation to send a dias. <laughs> yeah. His recommendation <laughs> that the panel came up committee. with. Committee. Yeah, the committee. Uh, came up with for what he told us. Uh, Hickory's a nice colored wood. Uh, most dioceses has their has a thing out front where you just slide the plate in. It isn't sitting up on your desk. And uh, I, I think it'll be pretty nice if council likes that idea. Do so I have a motion and a second? Who was the first and who was the second? I'm sorry. I was the first. Okay. Lindsay and Shannon. She was the second. Okay. Are we ready for the vote? No. Oh, I want to discuss. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, um, uh, we wanted to actually put a limit on the amount of money that could be spent. I know we did discuss it. Fifteen thousand for me is like my debt. I will not go over that. And so we could get an estimate from Chad, or we can get an estimate from somebody else if Chad's not willing to do it for that kind of money. So I want that limit on there too. The, or maximum, I should say, I guess. That, that wouldn't have to be in the, because we would have to vote on to, uh, to approve whatever the dollar amount is. We'd either approve it or we wouldn't approve it. Uh, you know, and, and we would know about it uh, beforehand. And, you know, I, I'm not sure Hickory I don't know how much Hickory is anymore. Uh, but that would be something that we'd have to look at after we got an estimate back. Because we don't know what this thing's going to cost. So, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy about getting crazy with money on it, but the city is in a lot better shape now than it has been in years. So I think we can, I hate to use the word splurge, but I think we can can do something to make us look more professional, more business, and have something for the court here too. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, I'm gonna kind of disagree because I think if we tell the person, 15's as high as I'm going, he won't do the, the real hickory. He'll do an invitation hickory that could look just as well. And maybe he could make his, you know, because. Why do all the work and then I know I'm going to turn it down if it's over 15. I just think we should probably let him know ahead of time where we're at in the money realm. Let me diverse. Well, go ahead. I have a comment. Should I have a comment? Go ahead. Did you go up there? No, go ahead. Right where you're at. Why is it? You're on the right track. Do it out of cheaper material, like number one plywood, mm -hmm. stain, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. stain you want. That's the whole cost. Right, all. exactly. 
Okay, I'm going to diverge just a little bit. Special meeting last Monday night. With the fans, the air conditioning on, this place could not be heard. There were a lot of things here that needed to be done. We are in direct violation of the ADA requirement for a public meeting and those of us that are hard to hear. Where do we stand with the sound? Well, that goes into this. Let me just, may I? Go ahead. Let me just go back, because the original thing I was tasked with is to find something to cut this half off, and the first sent back there, and the word mobile came from, not so much move it every single time, but if we go and move council chambers, we can take what we have and move it up. That's what the whole thing was. So that's what we were tasked to do with Chad. So with that being said, sir, to answer your question is, we're not doing anything sound-wise until you guys figure out what you need to do with your diases, because the sound's gonna work into your diases. So we need to know what you guys are doing here before we start running cables to hook up things to your individual stuff. So it all is kind of playing around. How he's working on getting your little plug and play speakers, but a lot of that comes into play with what you guys are going to do here. So we were banking on having the original thing the council was cutting this off and basically having a, a fill of like a fake wall that comes back here and having your dia set up back here. And that way you just block it off. So that's how we were kind of working in the audio. So if it's changing, which is fine, that's your guys' decision, we'll get back with how we figure out how we're going to do that. But we need to figure out this setup before we do audio. Mm -hmm. All due respect. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. I agree with Kathy. I have a tough time spending much money on this, to be honest with you. Um, with everything else we have going on in the city and streets that need repaired and I mean we have a water department doesn't even have a bathroom in the building they work in and that'll never in the waste in the wastewater I mean there, there's just other things I think that we could spend that money on um, I don't I get the idea of, of wanting to look professional and everything but I think when it comes to it's not holding us back from doing a good job for the citizens sitting at these tables versus sitting at a, a really nice wood setup or whatever. So mm -hmm. at this point in time, I would have a tough time spending. Mm -hmm. what, it, what it's going to take, because I think it, it is going to take probably thirty dollars or $40,000 to build a nice, something Easy. of solid wood. Of, for sure. You know, I think to be realistic, but solid, just, yeah, yeah to, mm -hmm. to build something really of good quality, it's going to take that kind of money, and, and I uh, just personally have a tough time. Yeah, let me say something. Um, years ago, I used to be a, a reporter, you know, and one of the first people I, I interviewed was um, Dr. Sifflin down at uh, Sinclair Community College, and I asked him about the college, and he said the aviance is why people look at the college first. So that's, you know, when you said the other day about when they look at you on online, you know, because I watch YouTube. I'm probably one of the six people that watch mm -hmm. the program. <laughs> so when I, when, when I look at it, you know, I kind of see the, the whole thing. And I'm sure if I was looking at to buying a house or coming in a business to coming in, that's one of the things I do look at. However, you know, we don't look too bad, uh, you know, up here. I remember the days we did not have the black. Oh. I remember those days. <laughs> so I, I come back from, the, from that. So it has improved. Aviance is it, it, a big thing. But I like Mr. Fields, you know, also about, you know, you know that's one thing Kathy and, and Peggy and I but all agreed on. You know, we talk about flooring, you know. Get flooring, and, you know, when it's butted together, you know, it, it can give you that particular look mm -hmm. too. So, <coughs> this council's eyesight to this city, and it's through YouTube. And right now, the image is not good. And if you think looking at this as your governing body is a good image, how they're set up, mm -hmm. then I think that we're going to have a massive difference of opinions. When you look at cities and how they're set up, it is a more professional demeanor. 
we're talking about spending 30, 40, 25, whatever the final number be, is something that's going to be lasting. And you do. What you're doing up here right now is for your citizens. Every Monday when you come in and you step in, you're working on behalf of your citizens. I just signed a contract for a less than seven minute fireworks show for more than what you're willing to pay for this dais. So I think when you take all that consideration, the image of what we're looking at right here needs to be improved. And having a formal council dais is going to help do that. Okay. Coming with college shirts on is going to help do that. You know, when we're trying to sell houses and sell our city and put city out there, we're against the competition with Beaver Heights, Beaver Creeks. People are going to look at, log on, let me look at the new Carlisle, and they're going to see this image. And it's not the best image that we want to give. We can give a better image. And that's why originally this council wanted to look at updating it for the dais specifically because of the image and stuff like that. So that's just where we kind of just ran with it from the administration as far as picking up the image based off what. Now, I have been told by other agencies, yes, we need to pick up our image. And that's what we're trying to do with this. You know, again, it was the original thing was to have it come down here and you have a more professional setting. We're going to put some fabric up here in your walls and make it look like an actual council dias when you shoot the, when you shoot the camera on it. You know, so that's what the original vision was. You know, and it was going to, if 15,000 ain't, probably ain't going to cut it. I mean, the guy needs to make money too. So I think if council really wants this project to come through, you might want to look at the realistics of it and how much it's really going to cost. I don't want to waste Chad's time. I don't want to waste anyone's time. But again, this was started because council wanted to take the initiative to improve the image and everything. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Call for the vote. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. I think we would hard press finding someone who's sitting in their office saying, gee, I might want to move your new curl out. Let me take a look at the city council meeting. Mm. Oh my God, I can't move there. They look like a bunch of hillbillies. That's not happen. Okay. That doesn't happen. Okay. Can I say? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Are, we just, are we not going to the podium? Yeah, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. So we can write that down. Mr. Fields, you spoke once, didn't you, sir? I did. Okay. I answered your questions. Awesome. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I guess I can only speak for myself, but I don't think the citizens care what you look like. We care about what decisions you make and what you plan for the city. And I think it's ridiculous to spend a whole bunch of money putting all that stuff up. I think those walls look beautiful myself. And I'd rather see the money go, like you say, for roads and for all the things that our city needs. What does it matter how professional you look as long as you're making good decisions and uh, listening to input from the citizens? And I don't know. I think it sounds like a dumb idea myself, but <laughs> that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, young lady. And I think we got to, well, go ahead. One more thing. Mr. Bond had mentioned there's not a bathroom at the water plant. It's because we can't have one there because the city decided to build where they built it on. So it's over a well field. We had an actual portage on there for our staff, and the EPA made us take that away. So it's not like it's not there because we couldn't afford it to do it. It's because the city chose to build a well, a plant over a place where they could not have a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why there's no bathroom in the water plant. And we did. The EPA literally made us remove the portage on. But they won't let us put one in the building. No. A real. No. No. Nope. <coughs> wow. Okay. Bad decisions of the past city still on us today. And that's what we, so we got to deal with. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we got a motion on the floor. <laughs> Take elsewhere. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm second. And the I'm discussion second, left so. in the motion. If um, you would call a roll. Yeah, you ready? Are you good? Ready? All right. You we got a first by Councilman Lindsay, correct? Yeah. Will you please Lindsay and the chairman. Will you please reread the motion? Absolutely. So the, they know what the motion is. Okay, please correct me because I did it all this is, is the, is the committee recommendation is to send it for a quote. Send it to the dais for a quote. Yes. Okay. Yes. Committee recommendation 
of what they want to build to send to Chad for a quote. We accept the recommendation of the committee mm -hmm. to send to Chad for a quote. Got it. I made the second. Mr. Shammy made the I mean, I made the first. first. Mr. Shammy made the second. So I'm just going to go down the line here. Okay, Council. Start with Peggy. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Vice Mayor Agerson. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Uh, Councilman Grimm. No, I agree with Janelle. It's a dumb idea. No. <laughs> Councilman Bond. No. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. All right. Let me see what I got here. So I got four to three. It passes. So we will move forward and take the recommendations and get a quote from Mr. Johnson. Okay, moving on down the agenda. Is there anyone in the public who wants to speak? Anything further? Go ahead, young lady. Can you say uh, your name and address for the record, yes. please? My name is Kate McVeigh, and I le live at 211 West Jackson Street. And I just want to say that um, Craig and I moved here almost two years ago now. And I used to work for a county government on the West Coast for a very large, populous county. And their council chambers were very elaborate. But you guys have more of your act together than they did. So I just wanted to pay you a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We don't get many compliments. <laughs> no. That's I think that's the Thank first you. one in seven years. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Very appreciate it. Now what, John? <laughs> My name is John Kraybacher. I live at 307 North Henry. Mm -hmm. um, here recently at Community Garden, you know, I have noticed go karts coming through the coming through the garden, and now they're starting to come up into the garden. You know, I don't know what to do. You know, and how to keep them off. They're coming down, then they zipping down Bayberry. It's Is that Bayberry? Yeah. They zipping down Bayberry. Then, you, then a few minutes later, here they coming again. Today, several times, you know, it looks like an older gentleman is coming up into the garden now and doing a donut and going out. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to do. I, I really don't. Call the besides, church. besides chasing them away, I did one time. What they say? Uh, I'll go talk to the parents. Fifteen minutes later, they were back. So that did a whole lot of good. You know, so I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, it's something to, to, you guys have been patrolling a lot more, and, and I really do appreciate that, you know, and it's usually right after, right after school is out, so I know it's a teenager or young person, so I did, that's a small Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. You want to go to the ordinance section or you want to interview uh, the other gentleman? That would be your call, sir. <laughs> yeah, let's do the ordinances and then we'll get to, to Mr. Peter. All right, we're ready to go. Go ahead. All right. So ordinance 2024-18 introduced on 4524 public and hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1460.26 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle regarding residential vegetation. I think this is uh, raising the uh, limit for the uh, grass from six to eight, if I'm correct. To give the any it discussion, would, it would uh, you leave yeah, yeah, some uh, pressure off of the 
code enforcement officers and give people a little extra time to get their yards cut. I don't really think eight inches is all that high. I would never let mine get that high because I have to bail mine away at, at you know two or three inches. But uh, it's it's giving the citizens a little more freedom to do what they want with their property and their yard. And actually, I think it'll relieve a little pressure off of the uh, with it, with it, the code enforcement officers. Anything else? Well, and besides, after it rains, like, I don't know, four, five, six weeks in a room. <laughs> then, On uh, Saturday. It gives yeah. the uh, residents a little bit more leeway. Yeah. You have a jungle out back, but you have leeway. Yeah. So. Go ahead. We've got people taking advantage of the six inches now. You give them eight inches and the grass is going to be a foot high. Or waist high. If not, I'll call. You've got something, Ken? I just, I think raising it up would be a, a benefit to many people and our ordinance. To, um, yeah, well, you got rain and spring, and and ours was way too long this last time too. It's a wonder we didn't get notified. And that's silly because we just had to wait for it to dry in order to cut it. So I, I see nothing wrong with this ordinance. And I know he'll get the people who are at eight inches real quick. Anyone else? Yeah. If not, well, okay, Peggy, you up? I'm up. Okay. In the spring, yeah, we had rain three, four days in a row. <laughs> During the summer, I have four neighbors that take advantage of that six inch. Mm. And it gets to be knee high before they mow. You give them eight inches and it's gonna be waist high. We've got developments going in north of town. These houses are on Main Street. Just what everybody wants to see is they're buying a $400,000 house in a, in a town that People can't even keep their yards mowed on the main street. You give them eight inches and they're going to take advantage of it. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, I have a call from the vote. I don't have okay. a first or second. Pardon me, sir? I don't have a first or second. Yeah, you did. Oh, oh, we don't? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I move to accept ordinance 2024 18. <laughs> So first I thought it was already done. <laughs> then how did we how did we get the discussion without that? We'll get to it eventually. I thought it was already done before. Yeah, that's a great conversation. I've been over it. Gee, thanks. No problem. So Sammy was a second. So we got a first by Councilman Lindsay and a second by um, Councilman Shammy. Uh, can I call for the vote? And we'll just go right here to Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Grip. Yes. Councilman Ball. Yes. Councilman Cham. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes five to two. Ready for the next one? Yes, go ahead. This is ordinance 2024-19. Introduced on 4 15 24, public and hearing in action tonight. That's an ordinance amending section 1460.43 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the parking of passenger, commercial, and heavy vehicles. You have an ordinance. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Again, Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Shammy. Mr. Lindsay, you want to go ahead and do explaining it? It's on here. You got any more? This ordinance is to the, and I don't have it in front of me, but the current ordinance is you have to have your vehicles, if it's like in a side yard or someplace, uh, parked on uh, approved surfaces, which is pavers, uh, even the square patio blocks, gravel, or limestone. I wanted to add number two gravel to that. Uh, it 
I don't know. I think it's a little cheaper than limestone. Uh, it, it gives the people another choice of surface to put down to park their whatever they want to park on. Uh, it, it just goes back to giving the homeowners a little more freedom to do on their property without being so restricted. And I see that somebody brought in some bags of rocks. Uh, the one is pea gravel and the one is, is uh, line, crushed limestone. And then the big rocks are number two and not all of them are that big. There are some smaller ones that it's in that bag also. Uh, you know, uh, if I had a, uh, an RV or something, a coach, or even, you know, uh, if I was into racing and had one of these 40-foot trailers that people run around with these, whatever the heck they put in them, uh, a number two gravel would be great to be parked on if that's what they wanted to. It just gives them another choice. <coughs> and, you know, that would be, if I had to write count, it'd be like five choices of whatever material they wanted to put down to park on. Uh, I had somebody uh, mention to me, you know, these rock, these number twos are awful big. If they hit that with their mower, that is my concern. If, if they're dumb enough to hit a number two rock with their mower, let it bend their weight up. Uh, we have a very good company here in, uh, in town, uh, just <laughs> north of town. Be more than happy to sell you a new blade. <laughs> if, if you want to hit, I would not hit that rock with my mower. I value my mower more than I do that rock. But... Uh, you can't have grass growing up in it, so they'd have to, you know, do whatever to keep the weeds out. They can't have weeds going up under the, the trailer or whatever they park on it. It's just another option for them to, uh, for their parking pad or whatever they want to call it. Anybody else got a comment? Okay, I'm going to get in this. This number two right up, stone. If a mower hits that, <laughs> it has been said that it can flip that out at about 75 miles per hour. The same problem I see with the mower hitting it would be if this gets out into the street, a car going by, a truck, whatever, would flip that stone. I think if you look on Google and you look at the instances where the number two stone has been thrown and injured somebody, there are quite a few on that situation. I personally do not like to see this on top of the ground. If it were to be buried and down so far, one of the other stones added to it for a top base, I would probably have a problem. <laughs> But as far as putting this up on the ground, on the top, no, I'm against it completely. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. If one of those gets out of the street, somebody hits with a bicycle, they're going to flip into the ground. Yep. I've done it. You so, didn't, didn't see it, did you? Anybody else got anything? Go ahead, Ed. I think it's a valid ordinance. I do think maybe we should just drop the number two and leave it gravel. Maybe that would fix that for everybody's. Mm -mm. No. <coughs> no. <coughs> Many homes have gravel driveways, though. <coughs> most, most people that puts in the parking <coughs> pads uh, digs them down so the <coughs> gravel is not above their grade. They, they really don't want the gravel, even the pea gravel or the, or the limestone, they don't want it in their yard. So they, they dig it down, you know, two, three inches, whatever they're going to do, whatever they, depth they want, and they put it level with grade so they, they don't, uh, you know, run over it with their mowers or trip over it when they're walking or, you know, various things. It, uh, I mean, you can find negative things on anything on the internet, in, in my opinion, uh, no matter what it is. You can find negativity about breathing the air that we breathe that is contaminated on the internet. You know, uh, 
I'm not going to quit breathing just because somebody says on the internet, oh, the air is bad for you, or the water is bad for you. You know, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, I'm good. No one else has anything else? Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I can see <clears throat> specifying that they can use gravel, but not that big. They would definitely have to go smaller. Well, we have an ordinance before us that has that in it, so we have to vote on the ordinance. All right. And you have a motion and a second, so I call for the vote. Yep. We're voting, sir? Go ahead. Um, we got a first by Councilman Lindsay and a second by Councilman Shammy. Uh, Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Grimm. No. Councilman Baum. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. I would ask for a revision and I'll say no. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Measure fails three to four. Ordinance fails. Nine, bring it back. <clears throat> it failed. I ain't doing nothing with it. Ready to go on to the next, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Find my agenda, excuse me. Mm -hmm. oh, um. uh, ordinance 2024 20, 20, 20, introduced on 4 15 24, public and hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1460 44 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding accessory uses for recreational vehicles and, and equipment and overnight parking. Do I hear a motion? I move to accept that ordinance. Second. The explanation of that ordinance is the only thing that changes in that when people are uh, getting ready to open it up in the winter or uh, excuse me, in the spring, or close it up in the winter. I know when I had my fifth wheel, I always hooked up water and electric to it so I could have water and hot water to clean the inside of it uh, and <coughs> get the inside ready for, uh, for travel, clean the refrigerators, you know, the stove, the ice, the ice box in it and whatnot. Uh, the only thing it does is add that they can hook up uh, electric to it for that purpose and uh, water for that purpose. And you can also fill their tanks up. Uh, and some of these RVs will hold up to 50, 60, or 100 gallon tanks of fresh water, which benefits the water department in our city. Go ahead, Peggy. It also changes having them parked from 10 feet to five foot to a side or rear lot line. And it also allows them to be parked on number two gravel pavers. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Lowry. Ask a question, please. I can answer your question before you answer it. Ask it, sir. Okay. The, the, the RV that, that you were concerned about, and I had discussion with Mrs. Lowry about it, they would be grandfathered in until they move it and go camping. <laughs> when they come back, they can't park it where it's at. Right. So, but I mean, I, I just, it, I know it was a short explanation. I just want to make sure I understood it right. So it takes them from 10 off of a property line to five, correct? Rear, rear yep. line. What about rear, side? Rear, side, side, side and side rear. Or rear. That's if it's in their backyard. So where's it at if it's in the side yard? Like, you know, if you're looking at their house and it's on if the- If it's in the side yard and they move it to some, because it isn't retroactive. It, they, so they would be grandfathered in, but when they move it and go camping and they come back, if, they, if it isn't five foot from the property line, to the side of their trailer, they can't park it there no more. They have to put it in their backyard somewhere or someplace else. Okay. So if they're on the property line now, they're- I, I can't speak to that. What, no, what no, what I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just saying in general, like it, just in general, if somebody parks on the side of a house right now and they're say 
inches away from the property line, that would be illegal, right? Because it's supposed to be 10? No, uh, I don't know. Answer that, because I'm not sure. You're allowed to park your camper or RV to the side of your house. It just can't stick out past the front of it. Right. And you have a probably have 10 foot closer than any structure limitation now. Yeah. So you'd be, they'll still be able to have it on the side of their house. It's just moving it five foot closer to the neighboring property. Because you're not changing where they can store it. You're right. just changing the setback right. from 10 to five. But it would be, it would almost be within five foot, I think, of, or less. Oh yeah. Of where well, currently, at. like ours, is it's, on it's the on the property line. So is that illegal currently? No, it should be 10 feet away from any, any structure. Okay. And then with this, it'll have to be five. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Anyone else? Go ahead. I would say that the vast, uh, we rewrote our zoning code where I work at, and I was in charge of parking, landscaping, and signage. And I think every single municipality or locality that I studied did not allow gravel on a lot less than one acre. A lot of them, it was five acres. Uh, if you allow gravel on an eighth of an acre, we're gonna look like an RV park all the way throughout the entire city. So that's a horrible idea. And um, I would challenge anyone to just think about motorcyclists. Uh, a lot of motorcyclists who crash is because gravel is kicked out onto the road. And that can not be done by. He's out of order. I'm sorry. Is I, that in this one? Yes, it is. It's well, right because, two because, gravel more pavers. because the other ordinance failed, because the other ordinance failed, these that has that ordinance recommendations in these ordinances would be stricken. No. Is that correct? No. Because no. they would not be compliant. No, they're two, they're two, they're two, two, two different, different sections. Ordinances. One okay. was like 1460.45, 46. Okay, well that would have to be stricken because the other ordinance failed on the on I was the, uh, sorry, I was referencing the, the vice board. mayor saying that something about gravel and five feet. So Can that's I what I was speaking of. I think we need to take all this. Is there a vote on the it has, should be rewritten. That that section needs to be taken out yeah, about the gravel. Be taken yeah. out. So oh, on the. Do you really letting this one die for lack of motion? It already has a first and second. So it already it does. Yeah. Well, if it fell, it don't uh, have to wait a certain amount of time for you to bring it back. So withdraw your motion. Thank you. Your second. Okay, I withdraw my. Second. I withdraw my motion, okay. and we will revisit it and and take the gravel part out because the other one failed because it across the board they all have to be matched and i didn't even catch it in here uh city manager kind of for me <laughs> just give me a call and we'll work it out yeah it just yeah so ordinance 24 you're both with your motion so it's just yeah it died for lack, lack of motion dying for lack of call, call me i'll call you tomorrow okay. i'll call you tomorrow you. <laughs> at some point We'll, we'll talk. That may yeah. have to be Wednesday or Thursday. I'm, I'm saying, but we'll get it done for the next week. I'm busy Thursday. We'll figure. I got out. appointments. We'll, we'll get we'll to you. Plenty of time. We'll have something for the next meeting. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd just like to recommend maybe um, think about instead of them parking against their house, couldn't they park at the rear line of their house and then to the rear yard? Because that might be less invasive on your neighbor. I mean. You already have a car in their driveway, and if they go to the side of that car, that's just too too close to the line. And I don't think five feet. I think you're making it smaller instead of larger. So, if we could move to the rear parking, that would be better. I think. I just just think about that. I guess when you're rewriting. Why don't you contact Mr. Lindsay and see about between the two of you work that ordinance. Yeah, I, I know what I think he knows what I'm talking okay. about. Thank you. Right. I know what you're talking about. 24 days, 20 yeah, calls for a million phone calls. <laughs> That's fine. I want you to get old uh, Ordinance, did you, say, did you say proceed, sir? I'm sorry. Did you say proceed? I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, ordinance 2024-21, introduction tonight, public and hearing and action on 5-2024. An ordinance amending Chapter 10066 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, to revise, revise cemetery rates. Please. Sorry. So moved. Second. It's read only. And second. It's oh. read only. You vote on it next week. Yeah, okay. Only. Never mind. It was draw. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment? 
Hmm? It's agreed only. Uh, it's agreed only. We can't even discuss this ordinance until yeah. next week. I appreciate that. Sorry about that. All right. Any additional city business? We have the uh, interview for. Right. I'm going to throw him after the city business. No. <laughs> that way. <laughs> Is if folks here? did not want to stay for the interview, they couldn't migrate. Is Mr. Peter Do you mind here? if I say something about that cemetery ordinance before you guys go on to the next? Sure. So you'll see those increase. It is a little bit more than we've done before in the past, but we're actually comparing it to what is next to us, and that is the cemeteries we actually compete with. The other side of that is we need to start reserving money for that place so we can actually start doing capital improvements. Um, so that's what we were looking at. We need a new roof for the cemetery house. We'd like to start paving some roads back there. It just needs some extra funds so we can actually improve it and make it look um, respectable. Um, right now, sometimes it gets a little crazy, um, especially with not having some decent paved roads in the house is not looking the best. So definitely want to look at ways to improve that and uh, make it a much better, better place. All right. Any other business? If not, we'll interview Mr. Peters. And those of you that want to stick around you're more than welcome if not whatever mr peters i'm going to have you come up front says you'll be a little closer sure that's better we can hear you can a bit. <laughs> primarily his uh, application I believe that my knowledge of zoning can bring valuable experience to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and this experience can help improve the Law. Questions? Go ahead, Ben. I've heard, <clears throat> I've heard Mr. Peters talk before, mm -hmm. before this council, and I've talked to him several times away from council, and I think he would be an asset to this city. Thank you. Any other? Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. I'll ask you the same question I asked earlier. Sure. What's your best uh, character quality that you would bring to this position? I think that I have a talent for being firm but fair. I think that I have an analytical mind. I think it's carried me through and persevered me through challenges in life, and it's always brought me through in the end. Um, I was able to get through college in my 30s, um, and I believe that when I see something in injustice, I feel compelled to speak out against it. And when I see somebody suffering, I want to help them, but you also have to help remember that you're part of the community. So you have to help the community as a whole, and that's the type of road to walk, and I think I have a talent for walking that road. Anyway, Bill, go ahead, Bill. Uh, <clears throat> scenario for you. Sure. Your neighbor next door has really ticked you off, okay. and you can't stand him now, or for whatever. And now he's before you on the BZA, and he's wanting a variance to put in whatever it is he wants to put in. Would you be impartial enough, being a neighbor, and really ticked off at him to look at it objectively? Um, I would refuse myself. Because if I couldn't look at something objectively, or there was going to be a, a, an illusion that I wouldn't look at something objectively, or an opinion of anybody, then I wouldn't take that chance. I think that could make you Carlisle and all small towns look bad. So I'd refuse myself. Very good. So that, would, that answer would apply to if you had a buddy next door and he wanted to do something that Absolutely. you would let him do something, you would let the vote, or you'd recuse yourself on that. Or, or would you make a decision based on the ordinances or the circumstance? Because all circumstances on the BZA is different, whether you know the people or not. You could, you could be impartial. Is what, is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. Because if there's only three of you, you couldn't be recuse yourself. It would just have to go back to the council, I believe. But uh, yes, I would absolutely be impartial. I actually run the BCA in Coleraine Township, which has 60,000 people. Uh, it has lots of business, it has lots of diverse different cases from you know uh, setbacks all the way up to Walmart. So I actually am a 
Board of Zoning Appeals Administrator and Senior Planner for that community. And so every month I run the Board of Zoning Appeals from the seat Randy's sitting in. And I have to make a staff report for each case. And I look at each of those cases with impartiality as well. I can't, I don't recuse myself there because I don't really know anybody and it's my job. But um, I look at the facts. I don't look at politics in the community. I don't look at anything other than is this the right thing to do based on our ordinance. Okay. So I have one more question to ask you that I did not ask the other gentleman. Everything you just said about what you do, why didn't you put it on here? There's only four lines. Isn't it? Right? I really thought it would be I've, better. I've got like 12 here I'm looking at. <laughs> you know, uh, and I, I will I mean, with you. I mean, that, what you just said would have been a no-brainer, I think, for all of us, that you were already a BZA uh, administrator or whatever, I forget the exact yeah. words you use, that you're on the board. The president, I think you said you was. Administrator. Administrator, okay. Uh, I mean, that would have, in my mind, to us, would have a lot more weight and bearing than us having to ask you questions. Then it comes out and goes, really? He's, he's already there. It's a no-brainer. Let's take a vote, you know? <laughs> well, with respect to you, I could have said that at the beginning, but... That would have been really, awesome. <laughs> and I've come to about 10 meetings. I wanted to get to know you guys and let you know me before, you know, thinking, oh, he has PCA experience and put him in there. Am I the right person for New Carlisle? That's what you have to ask yourself, and I believe I am. I didn't grow up here. I don't say New Carlisle the way that you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. But, He's from the South. <laughs> but so I did love this town. I did choose to live here. So where a lot of you grew up here, I chose to live here. And uh, I want to see it get better, and I think it can. <laughs> and I want to see what is good preserved. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank, and thank you for applying. Yes. My pleasure. <laughs> we do offer a new parallel speech class. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask you the same question I asked the other guy. Um, do you feel um, that you could handle the anger of a person who is dissatisfied with the decision you make and still remain compassionate? And carefully word your answers to them absolutely i think that a lot of people as cliche as it will sound just want to be heard um and they do want their problem solved and they do want things to go their way but when we look at the ordinance and we look, look at what's best for the future of the community um you do have to have some compassion and those don't exactly align with an individual's wishes Do you want a motion to accept these two gentlemen as a separate motion? Yeah, I would just do it as one. So right now I have a motion to appoint Chad Sinkrant and Mr. David Peters to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. His motion. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. So we got first by Mayor, Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. And then the second by Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Uh, ready for the vote? Right. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Abelson? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Welcome aboard, Mr. Peters. Thank you. <laughs> uh, look at that one. Okay, I need a move that we excuse Mr. Lindsay from the special meeting. Uh, well, okay, okay. I'll go that. Go ahead. Second. I have a motion and a second to excuse Mr. Lindsay from last week. You said from the special meeting last week? Yeah. yeah. Okay, not, not the one today. Special no, meeting. What was that date? Anyone 429? Is that what it was? Yes. Special meeting on 429. So we had a first by who? I'm sorry. Me. Second by? Chris. Ben. Uh, yeah. Or Ben, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bob. I never came from that end. <laughs> it's just us two. All right, uh, so uh, Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Did I even say your name? Councilman Lindsay? No, I, well, you do. Okay, but you abstain. I abstain. Okay. Um, <laughs> because I wasn't at the meeting and I can't vote on excusing myself. <laughs> Vice Mayor Eggleson? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Baum? Yes. Passes 6 0 to 1. Okay, I yeah. need a motion to accept uh, Mr. Chastain. I don't think that I don't have the paper in front of me. Motion to accept who? I'm sorry? Motion to accept who? 
the other gentleman. We did both of them at one time. Oh, we did both. Yeah, it's over and done. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you can't hear. That, that's, that's what the hesitation was. I was trying to think of his answers in his interview. Okay. <laughs> Uh, additional city business, I think we've got everything covered except I have one thing. I had a gentleman contact me from uh, Milford, Ohio, who is a uh, fire inspector down there. He is also the grant writer for Milford. And he wanted to know if we would possibly entertain some freelance grant writing by him. Absolutely. I would like to have counsel's opinion and whether or not to proceed. Mr. Mayor. Uh, that'd be administrative. And we already have a grant writer on staff, correct? Is that gentleman still writing grants for us? Who? Uh, Sister Chief Gallagher? Yeah. Yes. So we have a grant writer on staff that does a very, very good job. Do you, can you send me his information though? Send that, and then um, um, never hurts to maybe have a second. But let me talk to him, and I'll give a fire. Well, this this gentleman does a lot of grant writing. I'm aware of. He has recently been named the township administrator for Milford. Okay, great. So, go ahead, Chief. Uh, we we went that route when we with our FEMA grant and hired someone to write the grant for us. And after seeing what he had to do, my assistant chief said, I can do that. Okay, you see him one, just copy and paste, change a different jurisdiction, change and, different population, you're good to go. And right now, Jeff has written uh, three grants for us and got all three. Yay. I look forward to that number. Anything else for council? Yeah, directly. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, whoa. Who got first on that? Oh. Vice Mayor. Okay. Second. Chris. Next week. That's next next week. week. Oh. Oh. Chickens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got a first by um, Councilwoman, I mean, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Eggleton, and second by Councilman um, Shammy. Uh, so we'll go down the line here. Uh, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Uh, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleton? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. Seven to zero, we are there. Oops.